is fun for us. This is actually our cardiovascular wellness program. The lifestyle that we've come to know, we're more sedentary, we eat more, we're eating out more. Today we're talking about dining out, so we'll be talking about how just by dining out, you're taking in more fat and more calories. Um, we're a higher paced, stressed lifestyle. The first heart attack I had in 2000, and they were saying generally the people who have one heart attack would get a second heart attack plus 60% within 10 years. And the second one I had was in 2013. <laughs> Well, I had a heart attack um, when I was oh, about three years ago. All kinds of little factors, eating the wrong foods, uh, gaining a lot of weight, living a sedentary life, and having genetics working against me. And then uh, turning 60, suddenly the metabolism isn't, isn't cooking along. This is Made at Sac State, the video magazine. I'm Gloria Moraga, and thank you very much for being here to our three guests, and we're going to talk about Sacramento State's cardiovascular wellness program. But we do want the guests to introduce themselves. We'll start ladies first. I'm Lynn Livingston. And? And I'm Jim Livingston. We're going to start with Diane and have Diane. What is this program, first of all? So this program was the brainchild of the late cardiologist Tisa Capagoda. And we wanted to find a better way to provide health care on a campus, which is sort of a unique idea, and tap into the expertise on the campus. So we came up with the idea of offering it here, involving faculty and students. And the cardiovascular wellness focuses on diet, exercise, psychology, and nursing. So we've been able to integrate those students into the program. Now, um, Professor Livingston, you uh, were a professor here at Sacramento State. Yes. Tell us your story. What happened here with the possibility that you were might maybe going to have a heart attack? Well, this goes back to the early 90s. I had blockage in my carotid arteries, and I had some blockage in my heart. Uh, I had not had a heart attack. And Lynn, who's been my supporter for 55 years, <laughs> uh, heard about this program at, at the hospital, UC Davis Hospital that Dr. Capagoda had. It was a cardiac risk reversal program. Mm -hmm. The two-year program, go in, you do exercise and, and uh, diet and, and all kinds of, of tests. And so we, they got me into the program. And thanks to Dr. Capagoda and his program and my wife Lynn and Diane who provided the nutrition advice, I'm still here. We're gonna take one quick um, moment here and listen to um, a s interview, a video interview, with Dr. K. There's no magic formula to this because a lot of the time you're asking people to do fairly mundane things like, you know, take care of what you eat, take care of your weight, make sure you're active, uh, and, you know, do some reasonable amount of exercise. Make sure you, if you're being treated for high blood pressure, make sure you take those pills as prescribed. So it's not a lot of you know, major complicated issues, but what we want to do is to convince the patient that every little thing is important. And that's where you know, much of the effort goes in. This is not really doctoring as such. Uh, you know, any, any one of these people here uh, can make a significant contribution to what uh, patients need. Now, Dr. Capagoda brought his program here to Sac State and tell us what exactly does this entail? So we, we've worked together for a long time, Dr. Capagoda and I, in a hospital-based setting, and as resources declined, those programs tend to go away. There's not much money in prevention, and we wanted to find alternative ways to deliver health care, and a campus just made sense to us. So that's really how it evolved. We talked to deans, we got a lot of support, um, we got space in Folsom Hall, and we have a lot of interest in providing this program. So people come in to the program two or three times a week. You'll walk in any time and see people exercising, talking about diet. We've got psychologists that come in and talk about stress reduction. We've had a Buddhist monk come in and talk about meditation. Uh, we've talked about shopping. We're now having cooking demonstrations over there. So this program takes the elements of a program in a hospital, but it's not profit driven, it's training driven. So students are involved at all those levels too. We've always known the value of having a patient drive their own care 
and also the value of support people, which is why you see Lynn on the couch beside Jim. The support people in the life make an incredible difference to the success of this program. Now I have seen Lynn at the center. Lynn, tell us uh, what you're learning and what, how you help in all of this and how it's benefited your health. Well, thank you. Um, I was concerned about our whole family because Jim's family particularly had a very high incidence of heart disease. So when we learned about this opportunity, it, it became of a benefit to him and to me and to our children as well because we learned about various disciplines that would be, um, support our good health. Now what's um, kind of shocking is um, the numbers in the United States of obesity, but also the fact, and I learned this at the Cardiovascular Wellness Center, that someone has a heart attack and then second or even the third that proves fatal because they forget to eat healthy and they forget to exercise. How does this help? I think we put in the patient at the center of it is critical. It has to be, they have to understand what's going on with them. They have to be able to believe that it can be managed and they have to, it has to be meaningful to them. So if I talk to someone about changing their lifestyle and they are charged with taking care of a grandchild at home, for example, that's going to be their priority. I have to learn about that person and how their world, what their priorities and barriers are. And that, the whole team is on board with that. The other beauty of doing it, we've always had an integrated, multidisciplinary approach, but students who come into this program and learn are working with the participants they're learning that it takes a group, it's a team effort, and Dr. Capogoto is uh, way ahead of his time in terms of crossing disciplines. So we have two colleges involved, we've got four core programs involved, academic programs, but peripherally there are many others. We've got physical therapy students coming in, gerontology and sociology and many other um, disciplines that don't see themselves until they come into the program, how they can benefit patients. My name is Robert Hogan. I'm studying environmental studies and I'm made at Sac State. Hi, my name is Paolo Soriano and I'm a professor of ethnic studies and I teach students who are made at Sacramento State. 